Hello, and welcome to a Finnish language study se session. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed doing a speed run of Duolingo a few months ago, and I thought maybe I could just do more practice on, on live streams. So that's what we're going to do this week. Hey, 27, good to see you here. Uh, and I, I'm really thankful that I have people in chat to, uh, to help me out. And Vlad, thank you for being here as well. We've got some Finnish experts who, for some reason, enjoy uh, watching me struggle at this language. But <laughs> I don't know, maybe it gives you like a, a, a power trip that you understand uh, and you can teach me, I guess. Well, either way, I really appreciate it. So um, the plan for today, we're going to do some Duolingo, as you see here, but we also have uh, the Selko Uti set. And I got into a rhythm of doing this for a few weeks where like almost every day I would come here and I would watch you know, the, the news, it's like a four or five minute video and then listen to the radio. And I would pick one of these articles to try and translate. And this I think is like a step up from Duolingo. Duolingo will teach you a bunch of things, but this is much more, I don't know, like this is more applied finish. And uh, yeah, and also it's using grammatical things that just aren't explained in Duolingo yet because Duolingo Finnish is quite basic. I think it only has like 35 uh, skills or whatever these little units are called um, compared to other languages like French or Spanish that I don't even know. They might have close to 100. So yeah, I'll practice this. This is really hard. Um, and, uh, and, but the good thing about this is that uh, I can also come over to Google Translate. And whenever I get stuck or I, I don't, I mean, to be honest, I end up translating all of it just to see if I like, oh, did I understand how to translate this sentence correctly? And then, you know, I'll see what Google says. And then we'll also see what uh, chat says. Maybe they'll um, have some, uh, I don't know, points of contention. But uh, I find actually that this is surprisingly good now. Um, at least the English translation comes out pretty, pretty fluent. Um, I assume that it's accurate. And then I also have a spreadsheet, okay? And I just made a new copy of this. I'm gonna show it to you. Let's see if you can see this, yeah. Um, and this was, I, you know, just my test. I put some test words in here. And this is where I'll keep track of if I find a difficult Finnish word that I wanna practice for later, I can put it in here with the English. And this is the key. I've been learning some programming and I created a script that connects to this button. And so when I press the next card button, oh shoot, you can't see my cursor. Oh, that's too bad, the OBS on Mac is limited in that. But anyways, well, when I press ne the next card button, it uh, picks a, a Finnish word, and then if I wanna see the English, I can click this checkbox, and then it shows up. Otherwise, it's hidden. How cool is that? Right? And actually, I made a more complicated one where you can actually keep track of if you got it correct or not, and then maybe figure out which words you struggle with more on average. But yeah, this list can quickly grow, and all I need to do is put in today's date and the ID start. And so, I don't know, I won't go into the details of how this works, but there's a random number generator that picks at random, you know, in this case, one of four, and I could just be like, blah, 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 come over here, we do this, let's see if it pulls it up here. Sometimes it'll pull the same word up twice. There we go, now it shows up, and there's, there's no English. But if I come over here and I go blah, 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 it should automatically. All right, so I'll stop bragging about my very basic uh, <laughs> spreadsheet skills. Um, let's get into uh, Duolingo. Um, wait, what is this? The opposite of seko uti set. Wait, what is that? <laughs> Explain yourself, 27. I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, and Raul, welcome. Thank you. Good to see, good to see the crew, right? I got my, my graveyard shift crew 
Um, that was the last thing that I streamed uh, and had a lot of fun playing a, a full playthrough of Grave Graveyard Keeper. And all I'll say about that right now is that I did actually go and watch the speedrun world record of that game. And it takes seven hours and 40 something minutes maybe. Um, however, when I watched it, uh, I noticed that uh, they were using DLC content, which I didn't have access to. I mean, I could have bought it or whatever, but I wanted to play just the base game. And I can see that actually the DLC probably adds a lot to the game, like even for the base game. Because like one of my concerns with the game was that a lot of the characters you don't really get to, like, I don't know, get to know very well. Um, and I think they saved a lot of that for the DLCs. Uh, and so there was a bunch of stuff, like he opened a tavern and was doing all this cool stuff uh, that uh, enabled him, I guess, to beat the game much quicker. I think in the end it took me close to 50 hours of gameplay. So thank you all uh, for, I don't know, for bearing, bearing with me in doing that. Um, <laughs> what is this? Seko Otiset means unclear or complicated news. Okay. There we go. Complicated. Well, you know, it might be clear finish, but yet uh, the actual information still might be quite unclear. That's kind of, I don't know, how things go these days. So uh, what I want to do, as you can see, we're at the point where we've done this language tree like five times. Yeah, this was the fifth time I've done this. And so now we're on to level, yeah, you can see the five here, the fifth time I got the crown. This is like when you get legendary. They're, they added another crown or, or whatever this is, I guess. And, um, and so I can go to that, but I have to spend some of my lingots. And I should mention that my lingots are uh, coming into short supply. I had over 2,000 but I've been losing them because I haven't been practicing every day. I've just been paying for the uh, streak freeze to maintain my streak. But I'm actually excited that when we complete our first lesson today, we will see it, uh, we will we'll get 88 points, 88 lingots, um, because it gives you 10 for every, I don't know, whatever, one lingot for every 10 days or something, 10 day streak. Anyways, it's not worth going into the, the details there. Let's see, I, I think I want to prioritize practicing these broken lessons, like this one for wild. And um, yeah, let's just, let's just dive in. Here we go, restore. I'm, hope, I'm pretty sure you guys should be able to hear it. Let me know if it's like too loud. Well, not yet, actually. There's no audio yet. Kameli. Uh, Wait, is it? Uh, I feel like there should be two L's. Or is it two M's? See, this is, <laughs> or both. All right, I'm not looking at chat. I'm just going to Kameli and uh, Kamelit. Wow, I was, yeah, I was really wrong. I was very wrong. Sorry about that. <laughs> We're off to a promising start. But to be fair, how often do you need to say camel, right? Um, so uh, yeah, the we'll we'll remember that one for next time. Kamali and Kamalit. Crocodili. Crocodili. Um, crocodile, of course. Oh, is that too loud for you guys? I hope not. It's kind of loud in my headphones, but I don't know. The whole stream is frozen. Let me see if I can do this. Coco stream. Is that? Puro, not to be confused with poro, which is reindeer, the whole stream. And now I don't know if it's supposed to be partitive. Coco puro. I'm just going to say coco puro um, is frozen. Oh, yeah. On, I feel like it's something like this. On yes. Like there's something with ice. Is in the ice or something like that. Let's just... Let's just go for it. Whoa. Wow. I'm going to admit there was a lot of luck involved there. My voice is a bit low. Okay. Yeah, let me turn that up for you. Well, I turned up my voice as much as I can on OBS, but I'll turn down 
maybe the Duolingo a little bit. But yeah, hopefully it's going to be better. Nämä vanhat karhut elävät Suomessa. Nämä vanhat karhut elävät Suomessa. That means these old bears live in Finland. The whole forest is silent. Koko uh, metsä um, on hilia. As opposed to hiljainen, which means uh, quiet. Wait. Am I? Wait, hold on a second. Hilia versus hiljainen. Which one do I use? I feel like hilia. Why did I want to use Hilia? But now I'm thinking about it and I feel like it might be Hiljainen. Hiljainen. Koko metsä on Hiljainen. Like the whole forest is quiet or silent. Hilia, is that like doing something quietly? I'm just going to commit to it. I was right. I don't really know why. But can someone tell me what's the difference between Hilia and Hiljainen? Someone let me know in chat. Elävätkö nuo krokotiilit Egyptissä? Elävätkö nuo krokotiilit Egyptissä? Hilia is a woman's name. <laughs> but what about Hilia with two A's at the end? Is that not like what did what did I what did I just type? Uh, is it the difference between like one being an adjective? Because in English you can say you would just say quiet. The whole forest is quiet. A quiet forest. Would you say Hiljainen metsä? Right? Hiljainen metsä on hilja. Is that how you're supposed to say it? Like if it goes after the verb? What? They, oh, both would have been acceptable. Thanks, Kari. They both mean that, but hilja also means slow. Okay. <laughs> This is what happens is then I start overthinking it and I start inventing grammatical rules for the Finnish language that don't actually exist because I'm just trying to compartmentalize how this Sudoku language fits together. All right, here we go. Um, okay, here we go. Do those crocodiles live in Egypt? If I can spell Egypt here. There we go. The whole family is picking berries. Koko perhe um, is picking berries on Mariassa, right? Is in the berries. Okay. And it's on, not ovat. Tuo krokotiili on tosi painava. Tuo krokotiili on tosi painava. That crocodile. Um, on tosi painava is very heavy. Is that what that means? <laughs> I'm actually very impressed that I haven't missed more of the questions. It was good we started on a wrong answer um, to set our expectations low. It's uphill from there. These crocodiles live in Egypt. Uh, nama croco. I already forgot how to spell this. Dili. I think it's a double I there. Um, live in Egypt. Oh shoot, nama crocotili. Elevat Egyptisa. Boom. Oh wait, we got a dad joke. Kaksi mummoa meni Marian, mutta toinen a ma. Oh, I don't actually, hold on. Two grandmas, something about berries, many Marian, but another cannot or is not, I don't know what mahtunutkan means. Uh, yeah, I, I need help, Vlad. <laughs> what do you call a crocodile in a vest? An investigator. That's a good one. 27. I'm glad you're back with the the jokes. Um, el elääkö tuo outo lintu Australiassa? Um, oh wait, what? <laughs> they went to pick berries, many Marian. Um, okay, what do we got here? D 
does that strange bird live in Australia? I feel like most birds are strange when you actually get to, you get up close. Does that odd bird? A mahtunutkan means did not fit in. Ah. Uh, well, oh, they went to pick berries, but the other did not fit in. Is that because it means like you're actually going into the berry in the, in the context here? <laughs> oh, okay, many Marian. Ah, uh, okay. Thanks. Thanks for, you know, I do appreciate the um, dad, dad, dad jokes are best appreciated when uh, you can savor the long convoluted explanation for how they're funny. All right, the camel, which we're going to spell correctly this time, is trying to bite the tourist. Kameli uh, is trying uh, to, to bite. Oh shoot, hold on. Why do I feel like it's this? Moraista. Or does that mean to growl? Hold on, let me think. Because I know there's potkaise is like <laughs> to kick or kicks, to bite, to bite. I'm just going to go with my gut, with what I think it is. I feel like there's another verb for growling that we learned that it looks like this. Um, the tourist. Tourist. The, oh, I don't even know. We're just going to go for it. It's puraista. Oh, I, okay. They were very generous in giving me a correct, a correct answer here. But I got, okay, kamali urita. And then I just wrote, okay, puraista. I assume that moraista means um, to growl. Is that what that means? Well, you know what? Let's add puraista to our, um, let's come back to our vocab. Let's just delete this. Actually, we can move that. Let me show you how it works. Puraista, um, to bite. There you go. And we go flashcard. Boom. To bite. All right. I don't know for how much we're actually going to use that, but... It's, so that is, this tool is actually most helpful for this because there's a lot of very like weird vocabulary that you'll come across. Like there'll be like very specific taxi related jargon uh, that, that I might put in here. Or like there's a lot of stuff I realize like news articles about tax reform. <laughs> so there's a lot of like weird terms you end up learning from uh, doing that. What do we got here? How do you describe a thirsty camel? A dry humper. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. A murder by biting is murista. Oh, murista is to growl. Let's go ahead and add that one to our list as well because I keep mixing those up. Murista to growl. Oh, and I got to add the date so that it registers. Murista. Cool. Let's hear it. It's just giving me the same one over and over. Okay, there we go. Boom. <laughs> I like my spreadsheets. What can I say? Um, all right. Oh, you can't miss. Well, Duolingo, it feels like you're designed sometimes with the intention of making me miss based on how specific you want my, uh, my English translation to be. Vanhat pöllöt istuvat puussa. Vanhat pöllöt istuvat puussa. The... Old owls um, are sitting in the tree. Istuvat puusa. Right? Is that what that means? Do those koalas live in Australia? Um, oh, okay. Hold on a second. To live. Okay. Elevatka. Elevatka. Nuol. Koalat. 
I'm just going to say I, I'm positive it's koala for koala, which I also get confused with the verb to die, which is like cool, koala or something like that. I don't know. Anyways, uh, koalas, hopefully they aren't dying. They are living in Australia. Australiassa. Elevatko nuo koalat Australiassa. And I said that perfectly without messing up Australia in my pronunciation. <laughs> it's hard to change the way you say a country's name. Nuo ruskeat kamelit seisovat hiljaa yhdessä. Huh? Yep, yeah, I like my spreadsheet. Every fun party starts with those words. You know, that's, that's how you get the ladies. You're like, yo, I know I can do an excellent lambda function. If, you ever, if you're ever in need, I got you covered. Um, <laughs> Uh, nuo ruskeat kamalit seisovat hiljaa yhdessä. Those brown camels um, seisovat hiljaa yhdessä are standing quietly. So yeah, in this case, hiljaa is being used as the adverb. That's why I got confused because I, yeah. In the previous sentence, it was simply the forest is quiet, not the forest is quietly. So I don't, I don't know. I don't really understand, but it is fine. Um, those brown camels are standing quietly together, right? Ruskat kamalit. Or silently. Why aren't koalas actual bears? They don't meet the koalifications. <laughs> it's, sometimes it is worth pausing to appreciate the quality that you put into these 27. Thank you. Uh, oh, and Kari, thank you for the encouragement. Well, if um, you knew how much I've actually practiced Finnish and still am completely incapable of stringing a few words together, when the cashier at the grocery store is like, you know, oh, do you want your receipt? And I just, I'm like, yo, and I just take the receipt. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I think I could say en tarvitse. I think that's one way to say like, oh, I don't need it. But even then I just get a little nervous and I'm like, oh yeah, I'll just take it. <laughs> uh, but thank you for the encouragement. I need it. Oh no, the koalas are in trouble. Oh no, oh gosh. I'm pretty sure Gu Duolingo wants me to say voy a. Butter, no. Uh, the koalas, koal, koalat, oh, are in trouble. Oh. Ovat. I know I could look, they are in trouble. Ovat. I, I don't remember. Let me let me uh, let me hover. Pulassa. Yeah, I wasn't gonna remember that. Pulassa. So sometimes when stuff like that happens, I might come over here and just be like, "What about pula? That means a shortage. Pulassa. In trouble. As an adverb." Up the spout. <laughs> Up the creek. Oh, that's a good one. Up the creek without a paddle. Bulassa. But I, sometimes I just want to know, like, is this the origin? Um, yeah, I guess it, it probably is. But in this case, it's like an expression. So I might do this. I might add it to my vocab. Maybe we'll practice uh, later. By the way, if um, you want a little trick in order to put today's date into a Google's, Google Sheet or Excel. If you, on a Mac, if you hold Command and then press, oh, I'm on a Finnish keyboard, so I forget what it looks like on the US one, but uh, next to the L. And the Finnish keyboard, okay, this is a really bad tip now, I'm realizing. It, it's the uh. It is, it's the O with two dots above it, and you just press Command, uh, 
and boom, you get today's date and it gets put in there. All right, I'm gonna shut up now. We'll say in trouble um, and we're gonna move on. This is also uh, secretly a, uh, a spreadsheet tutorial. Um, Eläkö tuo krokotiili Egyptissä vai Australiassa? You could also just say a kitos. Well, Vlad, in the moment I get nervous, okay? <laughs> Oh, the date format, yeah. Oh my gosh, I know. Sometimes the date format's so weird. Um, just like out of curiosity, let's see here. Number, the date, we got many different date formats. Would this be more acceptable to you, Vlad, if we switched it? Um, do we need periods or do we need uh, whatever, the slashes? Well, I'll switch it so that you guys aren't cringing at my Americanness, okay? And I don't make me go on a rant about how actually Fahrenheit is fine and you, everyone just needs to chill out. Feet and miles are also totally okay. And it doesn't matter that there are a ridiculous number of feet in a mile, 5,280. Yes, we had to memorize and learn that, but we don't actually use it because how often are you converting from such a small unit to such a large unit? It doesn't, it doesn't, how often does it matter to you that one meter is one one thousandth of a kilometer? You don't need to know that. Or like in actual daily human interactive practice. I said I wasn't gonna rant, rant about it, but just I wanna be left alone. Okay, there are plenty of things to criticize about America, but our measuring units is just not one of them, okay? <laughs> uh, Fahrenheit is, oh yeah, is only okay if you're talking about weather, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, in science, where you do need international communication and precision, and you're dealing with, uh, yeah, crazy numbers, then sure. Um, but yeah, we don't, I mean, we don't publish our scientific papers in the U.S. in Fahrenheit or in miles, to my knowledge, but all right. Okay, rant over. I'm getting triggered. No, oh no, I'm getting tilted. Eläkö tuo krokotiili Egyptissä vai Australiassa? Eläkö tuo krokotiili Egyptissä vai Australiassa? Um, does that crocodile, uh, live in Egypt or Australia. Oh, okay. Where do camels live? Misa. Uh, gotta, I gotta think how to spell this. Camelit, yeah. Um, misa camelit. Ele. <laughs> Ele that. Oh, why is this so hard sometimes? That should be it, right? We should be okay. What, how about the fact that only Myanmar, Liberia, and the USA use the imperial measures? Well, that, I mean, it doesn't matter, okay? We just, we live our lives and we move on. <laughs> like, I guess... If someone comes to your country and insists and it's like, well, you guys use kilometers here. It should be miles. If they're like douchey about it, then yeah, that's annoying. But like if you come to America and you're like, ugh, miles, oh my gosh. It's all arbitrary anyway, okay? And um, yeah, I'm sorry, but that's just, that's just how it is. <laughs> What is this, Juha? You spent five months in Finland as an exchange student. Learning Finnish was an impossible mission for you. But you know, kitos, meaning thanks, and sika, meaning pork. <laughs> well, hey, you come to the right place. Uh, uh, we've, we're learning more words like kamo, kamali, which um, I misspelled at the beginning of the stream. Because it's impossible in this language to remember if there are double consonants or double vowels. And Finnish people, I, th I, I'm, I have a conspiracy theory and I'm going to stick to it. Finnish people think that the Finnish language is more regular and more obvious than it actually is. And I get it. It is more like by the book, by the letter, 
right, than English where it's like, you know, the pronunciation is so different from the spelling. But the double stuff, I don't believe it because even with a word like quitos, that double I sometimes, or I'd say most times, people just say quitos. That's one I. You can't make it shorter than quitos, quitos. Like, how would you, it's, it, it, but, all right, okay, my rant. This is now just my rant session. Um, <laughs> moving on, let's actually... Uh, let's... Vanhat karhut istuvat maassa ja murisevat hiljaa. Vanhat karhut istuvat maassa ja murisevat hiljaa. Um, the old bears uh, istuvat. I always have to... I get, I get sitting and standing confused in Finnish. This means sitting. Hold on are sitting, let's do it, the old bears are sitting on the ground, masa, and murisevat, growling, very, see, you guys helped me out with that earlier, so I knew, I get that confused with biting, um, purais, puraise, murisevat, um, oh, they're, they're growling quietly, I feel like that makes more sense than growling silently. Because if you're growling silently, then you're not growling, right? Well, let's see. What do we got? Yeah. Oh, what? Oh, oh no, I got... <laughs> yeah, USA is the quirky girl of the world. Yeah, that's... We, we don't need your approval, all right? We're just going <laughs> to keep doing what we do. Also, I just want to point out... Can I just rant about one more thing? Why... Is it not acceptable that we refer to football as soccer? Okay, it's like, it's not that we're dumb or that we're unaware that other English speaking countries use the word football, but that we just have soccer in the US. And I would like to point out the ultimate like hypocrisy of this. Do people call Italians dumb for referring to football as calcio and not football? Like the other whatever romance languages? No, because Italian has its own word for it, like Americans have their own word for it, all right? And just because, you know, we're not like a different language, I guess you could argue, like Italian is so distinct from Spanish or French, but like, where do you draw the lines? It's all arbitrary anyway, all right? So just let Americans have our soccer. Like when we go abroad, We'll refer, we're like, hey, you want to go see the football match? We'll use your words, usually. I mean, otherwise, we, we don't want to bring the mockery upon us. We do our best. But if you're in America, it's a soccer game, all right? And, and I would like to point out that in, when you come to America, tell me any time that you've said, hey, let's watch the football match, and you said it in your cute British or Australian accent or whatever, and an American said, oh, you mean the soccer game? No, because we're chill about it. We don't get all uptight, all right? And I, th I just want to pat myself and my other fellow Americans on the back for being chill about soccer and putting up with the world's disdain over petty things like that. All right, that was rant number 17. <laughs> Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Uh, what do we got? Uh, can I share the empty version of my spreadsheet or show how I made it? Actually, I do have another sheet. And oh, I, let me um, let me see. Where is it? Do I have it? Yeah, this one's even more advanced. One second. So yeah, this one. At so, I was thinking actually of making a video for how you could make this. And then I got a little carried away because what, what you have to do is you have to connect your, um, you have to create a random number generator, which sounds more complicated than it is. And then you have to create a macro and you connect that macro to a, a button, which is what you see here for the next card. But you can create multiple macros and, um, and connect them to multiple buttons. And actually, let me show you what that looks like. Here we go. Boom. Right, so on this one, so actually uh, this sheet has 
all of the Duolingo vocabulary. Let me show you, right? So you've got, yeah, I had to like manipulate. The data wasn't like fully clean or whatever, but I got to it. Let me go down to the bottom, 808 entries. And you could do this for you know, any of the, the languages on Duolingo. I think I, this came from Memrise because people, yeah, it doesn't really matter. But so yeah, I created this where it's like, oh, you know, we can make, what word do we wanna practice? Uh, Katsala. To be honest, I don't really know. I think this has something to do with watching or viewing. So I'm gonna say like to watch. And then we'll press show answer. Oh, I got it right. And so then I can come over here and I'll press I got it right. And then it adds a line. Um, let me click on this and move it. And so this is, yeah, I'm still working on this, but it adds this so you, it'll keep track. And um, eventually, uh, I don't know, create like an algorithm for prioritizing the ones that you get wrong a lot. So like, yeah, aku. Um, oh, does that mean like battery or something like that? I'm gonna say battery. Oh, I got it right. Okay, so we'll, we'll add that. It gives me a new card. Okay, banani. I think we know, you know, banana, we got that. Got it right. Suosito. Oh, that means popular or famous, right? Okay. Hey, I'm, do I'm doing pretty well. Let's see how far I can go. Well, it didn't give me a new card. What hell yeah. That is an athlete. Yes. There we go. Oh, I'm so proud of myself. Let's just, uh, that means night. My pronunciation is perfect as always. Kitara, guitar. You can't trick me, Finnish. I, I know what you are. Taudelista. Uh, Ooh. That means complete. Taudelinen. Means that's another word, taudelista. I don't know. To complete or to to fill. It means perfect. That I got I was really close, but let's say I got it wrong. So then I can click that and then it adds this value here. You can't see it because I put the button over it. Um, because ultimately you want you don't want to see all that. You would actually want the algorithm just to help you. Alright, okay, that uh <laughs> So that's a thing that I spend my free time doing. Um, what about you guys? What are your hobbies? You, um, you obsessed with spreadsheets like me? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not keeping up with the, the chat over here. What have we got? Morisa Lepa, crumbling sandwich. Uh, you're fine with soccer. Actually, the Brits used it themselves earlier. Yeah, it's association football, which is how it became soccer. Thank you, I appreciate that. If it was growling silently, you'd think it'd have to be Morisevat Anity or Anatomasti without sound. Hmm. Uh, I have an advanced spreadsheet. <laughs> oh, I really am getting the girls. Thanks. Thank you, 27. And it was appropriate, I had a voice crack right there um, to express the, the, the masculine hormones coursing through my. Uh, my muscles at the moment, so thank you. <laughs> All right, yeah, this advanced spreadsheet is just too salacious and tempting um, for the, the, the weak-willed viewers, so let us continue. Let's go back to the finish. Uh, do those kangaroos live in Australia? Um, okay, Elevatka, Nuo, Oh, shoot. Kangaroo? How do you say... Oh, I remember kangaroo is actually K-E in Finnish. King... Kinga... Is it... Kinga... Kangaroo? <laughs> is, it, is it just this? Kangaroo? Uh, I'm just going to go with that. Australiasa. Ah, kengurut. 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 Doing our best here. Does that odd bird live in Australia? Um, Elak. That odd bird. 
tuo auto. Um, why am I lean to? Why, why I have to, this is why finish is so hard. It's like I have to pause between every word. Okay, does that odd bird live in Australia? Yeah, does that odd bird live in Australia? Boom. Oh, oh and this is the one I messed up at the very beginning. Kamali? Kamali. What do you call a lazy kangaroo? A pouch potato. Absolutely. The way I say it sounds like I'm talking about Ken Gurus. <laughs> I know, I'm, okay, the, the NG is difficult. Helsingin. Helsingin. I'm supposed to make it like, or Kaupungin. The G is almost completely gone, so it should be more like Kaupungin. Is that it? I remember receiving feedback on that when I did the Duolingo, the Duolingo speed run. That was announcing that we reached our daily goal and we should get a, a bunch of uh, lingots since we hit 880 days. Woo, there we go. There we go. Oh, I don't want to do this yet. There, and I like how it uh, restores itself. That's quite nice. But I didn't get the, the lingots yet. Here, what if I refresh it? It should go up to, what, 86? Or 94. Oh, it added 88, yeah. Boom. That's how you get your lingots so that then you can be extra lazy and just take, like, a week or so off of practice. Yeah, it's got like the silent G. All right, let's restore this one. Love, how a pro. <laughs> uh, how appropriate. Uh, the important Finnish uh, sentences, you know. Do you have a girlfriend? Uncle Sinola. Uh, Oh, I remember we had a good word. <laughs> you guys taught me this word. Well, how did it go? It was like, hip, but do, do. <laughs> oh, do you have a, a horse, a horse girl, uh, a horse obsessed girlfriend? Um, do, 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 do. Right? Is that it? Oh, we had a whole debate, I remember, when it was like, did you bring your wife? Was that the question? We had a sentence, and it was like, oh, do we have, do we make it partitive or not? And it was like, oh, if it's partitive, then it means, did you bring any wife? Not just your wife, but just, why did you show up at the party without a wife? It didn't have to be your wife. If she couldn't come, that's understandable, but you got to find another one, another individual who happens to be espoused. So I'm pretty sure we only have the one a uh, here. I wait. What did I misspell? Oh my gosh! It has the two as. What? You've got silent numbers on your bank account. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. So many. So many. Hepatuta um, <laughs> is not in English. Pony girl. <laughs> Yeah. Ajatteletko sinä häntä usein? Ajatteletko? Ajattelet, oh, ajatteletko sinä häntä usein? It's just like my, my, my face, my muscles just do not want to conform to the, the sounds. I just want to say it with a really heavy American accent. Um, what is this? Our... Well, do you think of her or him often? Father hugs the groom. Oh, I forgot the word for hug. Um, oh, hold on. I can think of it. The first word that comes to my mind is the word for like smile. 
humile, something like that. Um, but to hug is like, I'm just gonna make up a word. I'm just gonna be like, uh, huoma. Is that it? I'm just going, like this is sub subconscious Tyler from years of practicing Finnish, but never actually developing it to any decent level. Hugs the groom, and oh, I totally forgot the word for groom. The bride and the groom, I don't know. I'm gonna have to look at this one. Yeah, that, there's no way I would know that. Sulhanen, Sulhanen. We're just straight up, we're gonna add it to our list. Sulhanen, groom. Oops. Sulhasta. And while we're here, we'll look up to hug. I was, I, I knew it had an H. Hala. I don't know what huoma means. Hug, yeah, halata. Oh, it means to notice. Huoma. <laughs> Huomata. Ah. Uh. It's eh, it's hard to keep everything straight. What can I say? Minä ajattelen sinua usein. Minä ajattelen sinua usein. I I think about you often. Peter, do you have a girlfriend? That's like if your name is Peter and you like travel abroad. How do people pronounce your name? I'm like, if I tried to pronounce that, I'd be like, Pyrie? <laughs> like, Pyrie? Um, is, that, is that how it's pronounced? And you're like, yeah, yeah. It's Puru. <laughs> uh, snowstorm. Do you have a girlfriend? Onko uh, sinua? The... Ustava with two ass. And I don't really remember. I remember there was a big debate and then the actual learning from it didn't sink in because it turns out it's it's complicated. But it's partitive. Do you have a girlfriend? Um, you often give a quick hug to your brother from behind when he sits by the computer. Oh, that's very kind of you, 27. It's not often we get such generous um, comments from, from you about your brother, just based on the, the historical <laughs> things you've said. <laughs> so, okay, the, the partitive in this case does not really matter. Okay, all right. See, that's also why it's so hard to learn, because then it's like the partitive really matters in some cases, and then it's like, oh, yeah, in this one, no, it doesn't. Haluamme halata tätä sisukasta poikaa. Haluamme halata tätä sisukasta poikaa. Um, we want to hug halata. Is that? That's, yeah, that's the word we just, we just learned that one. Did I add it to the list? Shoot. I'll add it. I'll add it. Halata. To hug. Unless I... I I messed that up. We want to hug uh, this that that sisu casta poika. Um, this the way I think of it and translate it is I would say sisuli boy. <laughs> this this boy um, uh, sisu sisu. How did they translate it? Contain like with sisu. Sisukasta. Yeah, with sisu. This boy with, but like when you train when you write it this way in English, it kind of seems almost like we are the ones with sisu, who are, we want like to hug the boy in a manner that expresses our sisu. But sisuli would modify boy. So that's why I think my word is is better. 
What, do you have a girlfriend? It's complicated around sus. <laughs> gutsy. This gutsy boy. Mother hugs the groom. Aiti. Hala. Um, suhasta. Liisa etsii sisukasta poikaystävää. Liisa etsii sisukasta poikaystävää. Liisa is searching for a boyfriend with sisu. Two women are hugging grandma. Kaksi na... Why am I struggling? Is it just naista? The nine is one. Naista. Why do I feel like there's I'm doing something wrong? That should be right. Because this feels like the partitive. Because nice deep. <laughs> I don't remember. We're just going to go with this. Uh, two women uh, are hugging. Oh, gosh. Yeah, this is where you have to remember that sometimes the plural isn't plural in Finnish. Hala. So you go singular. Uh, grandma. I'm probably still going to mess this up anyways. Let's just see. Oh, no. Perfect. Somehow I got it right. I don't know. Laulussa Morsian itkee ja Sulhanen nauraa. Oh gosh. Laulussa Morsian itkee ja Sulhanen nauraa. Oh my gosh, wait. Laulussa Morsi... Morsi is uh, the bride, right? Itkee is crying? So it's like in the song, the bride is crying and the groom is laughing. Now it all. Itke. Morsian. We'll add that to my vocabulary list. Just bride. Boom. Um, you love. I love this woman with sisu. Rakastan tätä naista. Oh well, sisu kasta naista. Neljä naista halaa äitiä ja sanoo, että paljon onnea. Okay, you're just gonna have to chill out, dude. All right. <laughs> I know we started with Nelia. Nelia. All right, let's hear it again. Let me just, I'm just gonna listen and see if I can understand it without looking at the words. Neljä naista halaa äitiä ja sanoo, että paljon onnea. Okay, f four women are like hug mom and say something. Neljä naista halaa äitiä ja sanoo, että paljon onnea. They say congratulations. That's it. Neljä naista, naista. Uh, halaa. Halaa. Oh. Uh, äitiä. Äitiä. Ja, ja. sanoo. Sano. Paljon. Onnea. What did I... Oh, I forgot to say etta. Sano etta. Because I, I translated it from English back to Finnish. <laughs> uh, weeping might be a better English word, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> More poetic for the song, of course. All right, sorry, we'll have to do that again later. Does she have a girlfriend? Um, Uncle Hanela, does she have 
a girlfriend um, do the istava. There we go. Ketä sinä etsit? Ketä sinä etsit? Ah, oh, now we're getting into some English grammar. Do you write who or do you write whom? Uh, I'm going to go with what I think, all right? Who are you searching for? Um... You know, then there, there were people who are like, oh, it should be written, for whom are you searching, right? You should never end a sentence on a preposition, which is a complete lie. That was, never, that was never a rule until someone just made it up and tried to impose it on others. Um, or you just say, whom are you searching for? This, there was a whole debate about this there, in, in the office. There was a funny scene. I wonder how they translated that whole conversation. Uh, anyways, all right, we're gonna go, who are you searching for? Boom, we got it. My version is better. The etta is unnecessary, are you serious? And they got, they counted it wrong? Man, why not looking for, that? I mean, yeah, for some reason in my mind, I just think of etsia as to search. But yeah, it means to look for. Yeah. Who are you hugging? Um, oh, gosh. What was it? Was it ketka? Was that the word that we just had? Uh, ketka sina halat. Keta. What does ketka mean? Is it plural? Someone in chat will probably help me. But keta sina halat with two two a's. Yeah, I should have known that. Halata, halat, hala, hala, halan. Yeah, it's plural. Okay. Mies, jota ajattelen, on rehellinen ja komea. Mies, jota ajattelen, on rehellinen ja komea. Um, the man who Oh my gosh. Who I think of who Hold on, let's just <laughs> We're just going to continue the sentence on rehellinen ja komia. Is uh, honest? Is that what that means? Rehellinen. I think it means honest and handsome. The man who I think of is honest and handsome. Jota ajattelen. It's just kind of weird to say it in this, this way in English, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change it. Who, who I'm, who I'm thinking of, kind of like you're playing a game, like oh, like 21 questions. Well, you know the the man I'm thinking of, the man whom I'm thinking of. I have a typo. My my English grammar is not up to Duolingo's standard. Uh, <laughs> well, I would like to point out they have a freaking typo. You're supposed to capitalize the I, all right? And you're going to come at me over who versus whom? I don't think so. I do not think so. Duolingo, Hera Pullanen. Get, <laughs> get your, I don't know, your pedantic butt out of my kitchen. Don't. <laughs> Rehellinen means honest. Rehenella is to brag or boast. Uh, it's to be like too honest almost. Yeah. Yeah, kuka is who and keta is whom. Yeah. Yeah, the thing is with English, like, especially with this kind of pronoun, it's 
it's now acceptable uh, to just write who. Uh, though if, if you put it after the preposition, it would be weird not to write whom. Like, it would be weird to write who. You're thinking of who? I mean, I guess I feel like kids might say that, but you're thinking of whom? I don't know. Uh, do I look like an English teacher? <laughs> Grandma is hugging the happy bride. Boom. Hala. The happy. Which kind of happy? Is the joyful happy or just like the superficially happy? Well, I can only think of, or there's iloinen, right? Isn't that one as well? And then there's onelinen. Uh, we'll just go with this one, the happy bride. Oh God, what was it? Morsian. Like the weirdest Finnish word, like this doesn't feel like it's a Finnish word, Morsian. Or is it Morsian? I'm going to say Morsian. Oh, but it's like Morsianta. Or is it Morsiasta? Oh, no. Oh, no. Morsian. Like nine n. But nine n is n e n. So I'm going to go with Morsianta because like han becomes hanta. It doesn't become hasta. Mumohala onelista. You're trying to trick me. I forgot to go back and edit this adjective. I'm sure it's wrong. Let's just, let's see how wrong I am. No way. No way. What? I sound like an English teacher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rakastan pyryä, koska meillä on hauskaa yhdessä. I'm going to type it in Finnish. Okay, what is it? Rakastan pyryä. That's all I heard. Rakastan pyryä, koska meillä on hauskaa yhdessä. Wait. Am I hearing this right? What? Pyreä. That means table. Not to be confused with the the there's I'm trying to think of the word for round. Pu pu is it pyreä or pu pu is table. Well this is not table. I love round? That doesn't make any sense. Hold on, let me hear it again. Rakastan pyryä, koska meillä on hauskaa yhdessä. Is he saying that he likes storms? Let me hear the rest of the sentence. Rakastan pyryä, koska meillä on hauskaa yhdessä. Is he talking about a guy named Pyry? Is that it? He's saying, I love Peter because we have fun together. It has to be the guy's name. And you just add the a on it because it becomes plural. Or it's not plural, partitive. Rakastan pyryä, koska meillä on hauskaa yhdessä. It's got to be. It's got, but you see how when I hear a crazy word like Peter, you know, how it can sound like 19 different words for table or round or snowstorm, apparently. <laughs> Pyreä. Yeah, that's what I heard. Pyreä pöytä. I didn't hear pyrä. I heard pyrä. You can't just put all of the vowels that we don't have in English right next to each other, all right? <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, I also messed up one thing. Hauska, partitive. Okay. I'll remember that for next time. Who are they hugging? Oh, do you mean whom are they hugging? Because I'm pretty sure you um, corrected my English earlier on that point. Duolingo. 
Wait, what is this? You remember making an impression of your English teacher in primary school? You had these word tests at the end of every lesson, and you always got 10 out of 10 on all the tests. Wait, what? You just impersonated? I thought you were like doing it as a joke, like to get laughs or something. But yeah, Pooter is a boy's name. Yeah, I've actually, I've met someone with that name and they told me it means like a storm. Uh, it's a cool name, but I'm sure it's like a more difficult one to, to travel with, at least for English speakers. It's not a joke. You actually got really good grades on your English lessons because you were impersonated. Uh, I always wonder how like people decide on their accent. Uh, I mean, obviously you might have like an accent from your native language, but like if you grow up learning English, and you know, you might have different English teachers are from different, with different accents, maybe some British or Australian or South African or American or whatever, how you end up deciding on like how you're going to speak the language. Um, that's a, I don't know, you guys let me know. How do you guys, when you're speaking English, do you kind of use an American accent? Because maybe on TV you hear a lot of like American accents or, or what? Tell me your story in the chat. All right, who are they hugging? Keta. Um, oh, and then they are hugging. How do I say, how do I say that? Hey, halavat. Get the he halavat. Oh, I did not say that right. Get the he halavat. Hmm. Who are you thinking of? Whom? Excuse me. <laughs> so I have to stop doing that now. Um, who are you thinking of? Uh, oh gosh, why am I struggling here? Get the sina ayatelet. Oh, I messed up the T. I messed up the double, the double T. I, I tried to compensate the double T with the double L. <laughs> the Finnish accent is, is called the Tonkaro English. <laughs> so Vlad, you were taught British English, so you had to use it with some US expression, having a Finnish accent. Actually, you know, one of my first teaching jobs was in France, and I, as a teaching assistant, uh, they happen to be learning a lot of like everyday phrases, but from a book that was like from the UK. And then I was asked to say things, you yeah, know, as a native speaker in the class to help them, but they were things that I would never say. Like, uh, have you done? And, I, and then I'm sort of like, is it like, do I, do I try to put on a British accent? Because it was like, you do, you do the hoovering, right? We do the hoovering or we, um, I don't know, we do the, the washing up. Is that what it is? If you're doing the dishes? Yeah, it was just sort of like, yeah. I, I refused. I, it was an attack upon me culturally and I said, nay, I shall be respected in this country. Nelia naista hala äitiä ja sanoo, että paljon onnea. I was not paying attention. Uh, can we, can go again, please? Nelia naista hala äitiä ja sanoo, että paljon onnea. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. This was the Nelia. thing we had earlier. Um, Nelia naista. Naista. Hala. Hala. Äitiä. Donde? Äitiä. Uh, ja. ja. Sano. Että. Että. Onnea. Onnea. Oh, paljon onnea. Paljon. Onnea. Let me double check it. Nelia naista halaa äitiä ja sanoo, että paljon onnea. There we go. There we go. Four women hug mother and say congratulations. We're almost done. Who are you thinking of? Get that. Sina. Aya. Dalet. Is this? Aya Dalet. Done. Okay. All right. Whew. That was some good practice. These sentences are strange. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, you know, Duolingo. I would say that actually these are more normal 
on the more normal side for Duolingo, based on all the lessons that revolve around wizards and stuff. U.S. media is so much more common that you use a weird combination of U.K. and American English. Yeah. Yeah. Or I've noticed that, like, some Finnish people will sound very American, but then they'll say something, they'll say, like, oh, yeah, so this summer I'm going to France. And I'm like, you mean France? Say it <laughs> if you're going to speak American. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, all right, okay, here we go. Let's, um, I feel like we spent enough time on Duolingo for today. Let us uh, take a journey into the uh, Ule Ultiset Selkosuomeksi. Um, here we go. Let's actually watch the news. And I, I'll be honest with you, I can probably understand like 5% of what they're saying, even with the subtitles and the visuals. <laughs> I need to see exactly what they're talking about. I need to have the subtitles, preferably in English, and then I understand 5%. Uh, <laughs> it's a problem. Okay, hold on. Come on, wait. Make this full screen. Can you guys still see it okay? Oh no, you can't. You can't shoot. Hold Nyt on. uutisia helpolla suomen kielellä. Hyvää päivää. We have to, I think we kind of have to Aluksi keep it here because I don't know how to get OBR. Aluksi kannatuksesta. Hold on, sorry, sorry. Pause Ene... it. Chill out with the news. Can you guys see it? Mistä kansan edustajista haluaa? No, it's like black for you guys for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, something weird happened. Hold on. If I do this. Okay, you can see it. All right, we have to keep it in small screen. Sorry about that. Nyt uutisia helpolla suomen kielellä. Hyvää päivää. All right. Aluksi uutinen ydinvoiman kannatuksesta. Yep, no idea. Enemmistö kansanedustajista haluaa Suomeen lisää What? ydinvoimaa. Yle on kysynyt power. kansanedustajilta, tarvitaanko Suomeen lisää ydinvoimaa. Lisää ydinvoimaa kannattaa 110 kansanedustajaa, eli selvä enemmistö kansanedustajista. Lisäydinvoimaa vastustaa kahdeksan kansanedustajaa. Yksitoista kansanedustajaa ei osannut sanoa kantaa asiaan. 71 edustajaa ei vastannut Ylen kyselyyn. Ylen kyselystä selviää, että selvä enemmistö kansanedustajista haluaa Suomeen lisää ydinvoimaa. Ydinvoiman kannatus on kasvanut energiakriisin takia. Suomessa tarvitaan mm-hmm. lisää omaa energiatuotantoa. Okay. I, I knew a couple of things that weren't in Duolingo, like takia means like due to, and it's like a post position. So they're saying like due to the energy crisis. For, that was one of the, the phrases. And then there were other words like selka, like it's clear. Um, yeah. Oh, udin means core or nucleus. So udin voima is nuclear power. Ah, okay. Well, pants will always be underwear and trousers is the correct. No, no, <laughs> no, no, sir. Nyt uutinen ruoka-avusta. Tässä jaetaan ruoka-apua Mikkelissä. Ruoka-apu vähenee Suomessa. Näin tapahtuu, koska hävikkiruokaa jää kaupoista aiempaa vähemmän. Syy on hintojen kallistuminen. Ihmiset ostavat halpaa hävikkiruokaa aiempaa enemmän. Siksi sitä jää vähemmän lahjoitettavaksi. Something, Myös something. EUn ruokapaketit on lopetettu ja korvattu maksukorteilla. 
ruoka-apu vähenee Suomessa. Esko Vepsäläisellä kävi hyvä onni. Hän sai tänään valita ruoka-avusta ensimmäisten joukossa. Jos on iso numero, silloin on huono. Mutta jos on pikku numero, silloin saattaa saada paremmin. Millainen onni tänään oli? Tänään oli mukava päivä. Sanotaan näin. Mukava päivä. It was a good day. <laughs> Lopuksi uutinen kulttuurista. Kuvataidetta tuodaan suomalaisiin vaatteisiin. Tämä tamperelainen firma painaa taiteilijoiden teoksia vaatteisiin. Firma tekee yhteistyötä suomalaisten kuvataiteilijoiden kanssa. Tarkoitus on, että uusien taiteilijoiden työt pääsevät esille vaatteissa. Haluan nostaa taiteilijoita, mielenkiintoisia tekijöitä tämän meidän brändin avulla sitten niin kuin näkyville esiin. Taiteilijoiden maalauksia on painettu vaatteisiin myös aiemmin. Esimerkiksi taiteilija Salvador Dalin hummeri painettiin iltapukuun 1930-luvulla. Kuvataidetta tuodaan myös suomalaisiin vaatteisiin. Painotekniikka on kehittynyt. Kuvia voidaan painaa helposti vaatteisiin. What? Yeah, hold on, pause for a second. <laughs> oh wait, oh we got havikki, wastage, and then havikki ruoka. Yeah, like wasted food. Yeah, okay. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, we got we're getting some good uh, vocabulary in here. Vielä sääennuste. Keskiviikkona koko maassa on pilvistä ja paikoin on sumuista. Lännessä sataa vettä, muualla on poutaa. Lämpötila on pohjoisessa nolla astetta, etelässä noin viisi astetta. Lisää uutisia selkosuomeksi yle.fi kautta selkouutiset. Näkemiin. Näkemiin. Kiitos. There you go. So we got our our news. Let's um let's do the radio now. All right? And I'm going to scroll so we can read along while we hear it. Yle Areena. Oh my gosh, that's loud. Oh wait, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna lower the sound on here, so I don't have to mess with OBS as much. Let me know if this is way too loud for you. Hold on. Kotamme. Terveyden ja hyvinvoinnin laitos THL on kertonut tietoja rokotessuojasta koronaa vastaan. THL sanoo, että jos ihminen on sairastanut koronan ja saanut rokotuksen, hänellä on tosi hyvä suoja vakavaa koronatautia vastaan. Hyvä suoja kestää ainakin vuoden. Hyvä suoja voi ehkä kestää myös pidempään. Suurella osalla suomalaisista on tällainen suoja, eli he ovat sairastaneet koronan ja saaneet rokotuksen. THL sanoo, että koronarokotuksia ei laajenneta. Neljänsiä rokotuksia annetaan vain vanhuksille ja riskiryhmille. Okay, pause it for a second. I kind of feel like, I mean we could listen to the whole thing, but I'd rather just go one by one. Um, oh my gosh. Oh wait, we have some more tips here. The kuvataide is liter picture art. And the story was about art being printed on fashionable clothes. Oh, okay. Yeah, that looked pretty cool. Um, okay, this is something about health and hyvin voinin laitos. I don't actually know what this word means. 
hyvinvoinnin laitos. Uh, THL, that's an organization here, <laughs> on kertonut ha has or uh, I don't actually know what that means. Tietoja, uh, something about knowledge. Rokotesuojasta. You'll start to see how how little I know, how incapable I am at actually deciphering a text. Rokotesuojasta. Uh, I actually have no idea what that means, but we'll get there. And obviously, Corona, Vastan. Oh gosh, I should actually know what this means, but I get a lot of the prepositions confused. Does this mean away from or like towards? So then, right, so I, I have no idea. Something about health has said, kertonut, is that they've announced? Is that what that means? Information uh, regarding the vaccine, maybe? If I'm just gonna like guess what the words mean. That would be my guess. Something about the, the upcoming corona vaccination, right? I don't actually know, but we're going to come in here and we'll... The National Institute of Health and Welfare. Ah, Huvin Voinin Laitos. Does that mean welfare? Uh, has provided information on vaccine protection against corona. That, that means... Protection? Hold on. I, sometimes I'll pull up one word. Oh, that means about. about. <laughs> okay, yeah, for corona. Okay, so vaccine protection. Okay. Has provided. Kertoa. That, yeah, that means to tell. That's why I said it, they announced. They've told. What do we got here? We got laitos means institution. Yeah, hyvin vointi, well-being. Laitos, rokote is vaccination, and suoja, protection. Ah, okay, what, what is this? Pihalla kuin lumiukko. That's Tyler in the Finnish language. What? <laughs> hey, pihalla is like in the, the yard, or on the yard, like, Lumiuko, like the snow? Where I don't see, <laughs> am I illustrating the point that you're making by struggling to translate just three words? <laughs> hey, I got Google Translate right here. I'm gonna do it. Pihalla kuin lumiuko. In the yard like a snowman. Oh, that's right. I should know that. Uko. It's like a word for an old man, a geezer, a gaffer. Gaffer, like you're from Lord of the Rings. Uh, in the yard like a snowman. Wait, <laughs> this, this must be an expression uh, in Finnish that doesn't translate. Like in Italian, there's an, a, a phrase for being out like a balcony. Um, so anyways, yeah. Wow, so that was the first sentence. The National Institute for Health and Welfare, THL, has provided uh, information, tietoja, about vaccine protection. Oroko, what was it? The orokote is, so actually, now that you guys are helping me, I'm gonna, oh, not, not, the, not the fancy one. We'll do it over here. Orokote is vaccine. And then what was the suoya means protection, right? And then we also had uh, laitos. So you can see this could grow very quickly. Institution. Um, and actually, you know what? Oh, if you want to learn a little trickeroo, if you ever want to have just automatic numbers, you can have one column being counted. I like to, yeah, capitalize, hold on. So it's gonna count all the, the values in this column, and then it's gonna create a sequence of that, of that number. So then it goes, so it'll always fill in. And then I don't have to worry about constantly having the dates, because look, 
Also, if you hold, wait, is it control? No, not control. Is it option? Yeah, if you hold option and drag, it doesn't increment by one. A little um, spread, the more you know about spreadsheets, there you go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's an idiom, okay. <laughs> Out on the yard like a snowman. I'm just in my own world. By the way, if an English novel is published in the U.S., do they change the words to American ones? They do. Harry Potter uh, in the Philosopher's Stone was changed to the Sorcerer's Stone. That's more of a marketing decision, not like a linguistic one. But they will... Uh, I think they do. I'm pretty sure they'll change spellings of like... For example, color, you know, they'll change that. To, yeah, like, oh, we got to spell it the, the American way or whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, sorry. Oh, wait, let me, let me delete that so we don't have it. Okay, wow, so we had a lot of good words there. Um, <laughs> we, can, uh, we can practice a little bit. Let's see. Halata is to hug, right? There we go. Uh, suoya. Protection. We just learned that. That was really good. Sulhanen is groom. Murista. To growl or to bite? To growl. Halata. We already did that. Lithos is institution. Sulhanen. We did that. So yeah, so because it's random, it's going to repeat a lot of the words. Bulasa is... Uh, in trouble. There we go. Puraista is to bite. Very good. All right, that's probably good. Let's uh, let's go back to our article here and see if we can finish this. All right, we got. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to highlight the whole thing. Thl sano etta jos ihminen on sairastanut koronan ja sanut rokotu all right, let's just start with that. THL says that if people on sairastanut, like, have been hospitalized, koronan, saira, like sairala. Why did, something, or something about, oh, you know, have got, or maybe have they have contracted corona? Maybe that's all it means. THL says that if people have uh, gotten corona and sanut and received sara sanut rokotuksen, the vaccine rokotus, right? That was the word. No, rokote is vaccination. If they've received Rokotuksen. All right. If they've done that, Hanela on tosi hyvä suoja vakava korona tautia vastaan. Then he or she, Hanela <laughs> on, or I guess they uh, have very good. Protection, suoya, um, against, vastan, against, vakava. Doesn't that mean like strong? Vakava. I, I feel like I've learned that word before. Corona, tautia. Corona, I don't actually know what tautia means. Did we, did we already establish that word earlier? <laughs> oh, I don't know. We'll come back to it. Let's do, let's do the rest of this. Hira suoya kestä ainakin, not Anakin Skywalker, but ainakin vuoden. Good protection kestä something at least a year. Kestä, it will last. Is that what that means? Hyvä suoja voi ehkä kestä myös pidempään. Good protection can perhaps last also pidempään. I actually don't know if this is Peter Pan. 
All right, we've got Anakin and Peter Pan in the same paragraph. But otherwise, I don't even know Peter and Pan. All right, well, let's, um, let's take it over to the good old Google. Uh, yeah, we've got like a warrant. I'm sure like my, my live stream is getting flagged right now for talking about, <laughs> I didn't choose that. This is just the news. All right. And it's from a reliable source. Okay. Oh my gosh. Uh, maybe I should, maybe I should change, move to a different article so we don't get uh, blocked or something. Who knows? Um, what do we got over here? Uh, orokotus and orokote are synonyms. They mean the same thing. Oh wait, and puraista is to take a bite. And pura, I can't pronounce. Also, I'm, I can't pronounce double R's to bite. Yeah. So I'm just going to opt for puraista uh, at all times now. Thank you, Vlad. <laughs> or maybe orokote might refer more to the shot itself. Okay. Uh, yeah, thanks for appreciating my sporadic way of thinking here. Peter Pan is petaripannu. Is that actually what, what you say? <laughs> oh, okay. Oroko, orokote is vaccine and orokotus is the vaccination. Ah, thank you for that. Let me see if, we, if I wrote that correctly here. Yeah, 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 we did. Orokote is vaccine. I'll, you know what, and I'll even add uh, orok oh, not in all caps though. Orokotus um, for vaccination. I mean, it's a bit redundant. It doesn't matter though. Um, good. Okay, well, let's, let's see what Google Translate says here. THL says, Etta jos ihminen on sairastanut koronan jas. Okay. If that, a, if it, that if a person has contracted the coronavirus on, okay, so sairastunut. Um, I just got confused because I was like, is it, does that mean they've been hospitalized? Because I, I saw a sairaw, and that means like, I think of a hospital, sairaw. Um, if they contracted the coronavirus and received a vaccination, and, okay, received a vaccination, they have very good protection against Severe vakava. That's why I was like strong corona. Uh, Pautia. I'm going to just very quickly. Disease. Pauti. I'm going to add that now to our, our vocab. Oops. Our vocabulary. If I can type over here. Tautia, disease. Let's see. Um, go back. Yeah, so they have very good protection. Yeah, and then the strong corona disease against. Uh, also, good protection lasts at least a year. Kesta, to last. So another thing I like about Google Translate is sometimes when you double click or you select whatever word, uh, it'll give you like the original, you know, it'll show you more translations of that, that word. That's pretty cool. Uh, to last. I'm going to add that one because I don't think I've learned that word yet. Kesta, to last. Where was I? And then we also had a good protection may also last longer. Peter Pan. We just have to remember that Peter Pan remains a boy longer than the, you know, the normal thing, which is kind of weird. That's a weird kind of fantasy to write about. I'm just going to say it's rather sus that the, an author came up with that. <laughs> Uh, anyways, okay, wait, can I, there we go, Pete and Pan, um, longer. Let's double check. Okay, there's, I was thinking there might be more, uh, 
what is it, variations or something. Anyways, okay, oh wait, okay, you guys got some good tips here. Sidostha is to be ill, Sidostanut is has been ill. Oh, okay. On Sidostanut bears the meaning of having gone through the disease. Um, so if you have on Sidostanut, that means you're already better, like you've already healed from it, or can you still be sick with the disease? Um, or is, is it like a complete action, I guess? Sairastua yohonkin, to get sick with something, to contract a disease. Oh, wow. Okay, we're adding, we're going to add more stuff here. What did we hear? <laughs> okay, I'm going to start with this. Sairastha is to be ill, and then we've got sidostan, sidos, hold on a second, sidostua, sidos, sidostua, it is to get sick with something. And you know what? I'm going to also go parentheses over here with cuz that's a good yohonkin. Boom. To get sick with something. And then we get a we get our Good. Wow. Pitka pidempi pisin. Long longer longest. Ah, okay. On side astronaut might be still ill. So, okay, you don't have to have already gone through it, you might still have it. Side asta, yeah, and then side astua. Yeah, okay, I wrote it correctly, unless, yeah, and you wrote exactly, all right. We good, we hoover. Eh? Um, where, where were we? See, look how much time it takes just to translate a few sentences. Um, let's do this next one. Oh gosh, here we go. Suorella osalla suomalaista on tällainen suoja. What? Well, I know that we just learned protection for suoja. Suorella, a large, a, a large part of Finns have Thalain and Thal and okay, I'm sorry, but you can't you can't go ah and then go ah on me in the same word, Finnish language. I thought that was one of the principles. And I understand if it's a compound word, then sometimes like oh the one word and you put it together and they have different vowel harmony. But they're still basically separate words, but there's just no space between them. But this is different. This is clearly not a compound word. Dalainen. Uh, so something, something about they've done, I don't know. There, it, it probably actually means, because this is not like a past or whatever, part, participle, I don't know. Um, so it probably saying like there is a lot of protection or something kind of protection in a large part of the population, there is some kind of protection, Eli, or they ovat sairastaneet. Oh my gosh, it's plural. Sairastaneet. Uh, Wait, hold on. Let me go back here just to double check. Is it this one or this one? I'm going to say it's this one. They have been ill, oh, wrong one, hold on. Or they've, they've been ill with corona and gotten the, um, the, vac the vaccination. Rokotuksen. All right, I'm gonna look at chat. Let me see here. Thalainen used to be Thamanlainen. That's why it has both a and a. Oh, 
Yeah, in 27, I believe that the Finnish language was invented just to vex me. All right. That's a good word. Do you guys know that word? What's it in Finnish? Let's vex. To vex. Harmitta. Arsutta. I like that one. Ars. <laughs> <laughs> that one gets that hits that hits the right spot to my English brain. Uh, kiusata, vaivata, it vexes me. Uh, anyway, sorry, where were we? Uh, a large part of Finns have this kind of protection. Oh, okay, so that's what tama, this kind of. Uh, this kind of protection. In other words, they have had the coronavirus and received vaccination. Yeah, they have had, you know, Google is, this is the thing, like Google's actually pretty gifted at not translating too literally, right? They have had the coronavirus versus like they have contracted uh, corona and uh, gotten the vac the vaccination. So I think I got most of it eventually, but yeah, tal talainen. I'm gonna add this to my because I guarantee you I will forget this. Hold on. Talainen. Um how did they they put it like this kind of and then they also wrote of this sort. Um, I'm just going to say this kind of. Boom. Boom goes the dynamite. Uh, but I, I actually am pretty proud that I understood this, that a large part of Finns. Yeah. But this is where it gets kind of weird, like, because if we're going to say Osa, Right, we got osa here. Because like sometimes the English is almost, uh, what is it, like too, too fluent, right? Or it's like translating it too well that then I lose what's actually happening grammatically over here. Because in my head, I'm thinking, okay, there is the same kind of, or this kind of protection within a large part of the Finnish population. That's kind of how I was thinking of it. Because I don't, is this the sentence? Or I'm sorry, is this the subject of the sentence? Because I feel like it's more like there is. It might be a better, more literal translation. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh yeah, we're going back to, sorry, I'm just not reading chat after going down the Otter, Adder, Adersutta uh, tangent there. Let's see. What? A good counterpart is selinen. That kind of. Ah, I'll, um, I'll add that. Selinen. That kind of. Thank you for that. And... Um, uh, in spoken language, you can just say talanen or talainen. Yeah. Tamanlainen is the answer to the question minkalainen. <laughs> uh, this is just the quirks of the Finnish possessive construction. Finnish doesn't have a verb have. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, no. Now that you say that, it's obvious. Because we also have like, like, right, like, mean a lot on. And then you would say, that line and suoya, right? I have such protection. <laughs> I have such a swamp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Finland. Thank you for being a giant swamp. Um, okay, there we go. There we go. 
we got to finish. We got to finish this. Um, let's see. Uh, THL. I don't even know how to pronounce the words in, or the letters in Finnish. T. Och. <laughs> Hol. T. Hol. Al. Is that it? I mean, he says it here. Ja saaneet rokotuksen. THL sanoo, THL. THL sanoo, että koronarokotuksia ei laajenneta. Neljänsiä rokotuksia annetaan vain vanhuksille ja riskiryhmille. There we go. There we go. We gotta, we gotta finish this. Um, TH, THL. <laughs> Oh, okay. T THL says that the corona uh, vaccine or vaccination, actually, I don't know which one is being used here, but because the words, they, the endings keep changing. I'm going to say vaccination. That the corona vaccination, a lion, lion, law, lion, neta. It's hard to do a double N in that position. Lionetta. I'm just gonna, yeah, skip over that. So I actually don't know what that word is. Neljänsiä. Uh, oh gosh. Four. Rokotuksia. Vaccinations. But this, uh, why, why? Nelja means four. Why is it neljänsiä? Why are you adding all this? fancy ass stuff to the end of a word. Sorry, I don't mean to get frustrated, but we're about to get a little real with the Finnish language. Anetan vain vanhuksille ja... Okay, I understand some of this. Anetan is like, it's being given to only vain Vanhuksille, the elderly, ja riskiryhmille, and the risk groups, right? For, I guess this is like the fourth vaccination. Is that how it, it's supposed to? Neliansia. Yeah, learning the numbers and how the numbers change is, is tough. That's that's all I have to say. Oh, <laughs> it's the ordinal number in the partitive case. So yeah, the ordinal ordinal meaning the fourth. Laya means wide. Layanta is to widen. Laya wide. So THL says that Corona vaccination. Corona, that the corona vac vaccinations are are not being widened is that that they are not widening the vaccinations Neliansia means that there are many people who are getting the fourth one <laughs> wait what this changes everything mr cannot choose a name that this ne like neliansia means that there are a, a lot of people because i don't know how you i okay hold on let's let's take a look at google thl says that corona vaccinations will not be expanded fourth vaccinations are given only to the elderly and to risk groups. Neljänsiä. Just want to hear Google say it. Neljänsiä. It's like a fourth one, but for more than one person. Oh, so this is like a plural version of the, the word fourth, 
like fourths. <laughs> what? Hey, 27, welcome back. Yeah, Google's right about this in the partitive case. Oh. The fourth vaccinations. I thought it would be plural because it's referring to multiple vaccinations. Not that it's referring to multiple people. Am I... Is there some other way you would write this? What if we were just referring to one person? The fourth vaccination, you know, being given to one person. Would, would you use a different... A different version of Nelia? Nelians, yeah. Let's see. Nelias for Nelias, fourth. Nelianet, the fourth, <laughs> plural. Neliansian, of the fourth, plural genitive. Nelianet, the fourth, plural partitive. Wait, but that was the same one that you wrote earlier. Nelianet, Nelianet. I mean, did you mean to write nel Neliansia on the, the plural partitive? Multiple fourth vaccinations. Ah, so then you could write Nelias Orokotus Anetan Vain Uhdelle Ihmiselle. So you're saying there that the fourth vaccination, singular, is being given only uh, to Uhdelle one Ihmisil Ihmiselle uh, person. Oh, okay, that's actually good. I'm going to write that out real quick. Nelias orokotus anetan vain yhdelle ihmiselle. Boom. The fourth vaccination is given to only one person. Wow. So, yeah, that, was, that is crazy. And then you've got neliansia. Quarters. <laughs> I mean, I, that's, yeah, I guess that's exactly fourths, quarters. Wait, if I, if I just go like that, yeah, it doesn't do anything. Uh, yeah. Orokotuxia. Fourth vaccinations. Yeah, it's just, it's, it gets confusing because the fourth vaccination is singular, but it's, it's the fourth one that's happening, so that it's like, uh, it's, it feels plural in another sense. So there's layers and layers of plurality. Uh, and then add, it, add in the partitive, you know, and man, we're just, we're just getting started. Um, <laughs> this was good. I think we did, we made some good progress with this. Um, all right, let's, wait, let me just double check. Yeah, okay, let's finish this radio and then if, if we feel that there's a good article, oh gosh, there's a hockey one, oh my gosh. Oh, one about tires, maybe this will be a good one we can do. All right, let's, let's listen to this and then we'll, we'll translate the tire one because it's a bit shorter. And that'll be our end. <laughs> Työvoimapulan kasvu on hidastunut. Näin kertoo työ- ja elinkeinoministeriön selvitys. Eniten työvoimasta on pulaa sosiaali- ja terveysalan ammateissa. Myös päiväkotien opettajista ja erityisopettajista on kova pula. No idea. Ammatteja joihin on tarjolla liikaa työntekijöitä, ovat yleissihteerit, vaatturit ja ompelijat, toimittajat sekä mainonnan ja markkinoinnin erityisasiantuntijat. Taksin saaminen on vaikeutunut pienillä paikkakunnilla. Taksit eivät halua odottaa kyytejä pienillä paikkakunnilla, 
koska asiakkaita on vähän. Taksit ajavat mieluummin vilkkaisiin kaupunkeihin, joissa taksit saavat helposti paljon kyytejä. Syy on uusi taksilaki, joka tuli voimaan neljä vuotta sitten. Takseilla ei ole enää velvollisuutta päivystää eri alueilla. Taksit saavat valita, missä ne ajavat. Taksinkuljettajat sanovat, että heidän ei kannata päivystää pienellä paikkakunnalla esimerkiksi yöllä. For example, at night. That's all I, I got out of that. Kehitysvammaliitto täyttää tänä vuonna 70 vuotta. Turun palloseura TPS täyttää tänä vuonna 100 vuotta. Kehitysvammaliitto ja TPS järjestävät yhdessä tapahtuman, jossa kerrotaan ihmisille kehitysvammaisuudesta. Tapahtuma järjestetään huomenna keskiviikkona Turkuhallissa, jossa pelataan TPS Kärpät jääkiekkopeli. Peliin on myös tarjottu alennuslippuja kehitysvammaisille ihmisille. Kehitysvammaliitto auttaa myös TPS kertomaan urheiluseuran asioista selkokielellä. Tänään tiistaina on alkanut talvirengaskausi. Autoissa pitää olla talvirenkaat, jos keli on liukas. Talvirengaskausi alkaa marraskuun alussa ja kestää maaliskuun loppuun. Autoissa voi käyttää nastarenkaita tai kitkarenkaita. Keskiviikkona koko maassa on pilvistä ja paikoin on myös sumuista. Lännessä sataa vettä, muualla on poutaa. Lämpötila on pohjoisessa nolla astetta, etelässä noin viisi astetta. We got the winter tires, yes. Oh wait, we got more. We're going back to the Nelia. Wait, you're, now that you're thinking about this, you could also say Nelianet, Roko Tukset Anetan, but as a slightly different connotation. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Neliansia Roko Tuksia Anetan means that the vaccinations are still ongoing. The difference could be exemplified. Wait, okay, the fourth vaccinations are being given to versus Nelianet. Okay, the fourth vaccinations will be given. Oh, okay. Wow, yeah, no, that's, um, <laughs> that's advanced. That's beyond my pay grade in the Finnish language at the moment. Um, what is this? Kehitysvamma literally means development injury, like a disability. Oh, okay. Kehitysvamma. All right, well, I'm thinking probably a good thing. I want to end here in a few minutes. Um, so let's, let's do the short story about tires. Winter tires, the talvi rengaskausi um, season. Winter tire season. Also, this is another thing I learned since moving to Finland. Uh, the way they spell tire in the UK is different. They spell it with a Y which I kind of approve of. As a Y, a T-Y guy myself, um, I could get behind that spelling. Anyways, let's continue. So, tänään tiistaina on alkanut talvi rengaskausi. So, this Tuesday on alkanut began the winter tire season. Autoissa pitää olla talvi renkat. Jos keli on liukas. I, I recognize some of these words, but I'm just not sure. So, out, uh, so cars, autoissa, in the car, must be winter tires. On the car. 
or in, well, here's a picture of the tires in the car. Do they just need to be in your car and not on the car? Your <laughs> skelly on liukas. If, oh, there's my, my alarm reminding me. Um, Kelly, I don't, I don't remember what Kelly means. We'll get there, we'll get there. And liukas, I should know what that means. Ah, I can't remember. I, I do recognize that word, but I have no idea. All right, so Thalvi Rengas Kausi, the ty winter tire season uh, begins. Maraskun uh, in November, mud month. At the, at the start of November. Alosa, is that what that means? I'm, if not, I'm making it up. I'm doing a free verse translation. And kesta lasts, remember we had that word earlier. Proud of myself for remembering that. And it lasts uh, until the end of Mali school. Mali school. That, I believe, is that March? I'm, I'm hoping that's March. Auto uh, is in or on the car. Voi kaita must or can kaita. Uh, Doesn't that mean like to see? Can see. I don't know if that's or can watch. Nastaren kaita tai. Kit karen kaita. So this or that. But I don't actually know what either of those words mean. Okay. But they're probably like technical terms for tires. Uh, let's go ahead and check our Google. See what it says. Today, Tuesday. Oh, so okay. Yeah, I, I originally translated it as this Tuesday. But it really is... Today, Tuesday, the winter tire season has started. Um, cars must have winter tires if the weather is slippery. Liuka, slippery. See, I knew I had learned that. Geli means weather. Wait, what? Why does it translate it as going? Someone tell me in chat why it's Kelly and not sa. I thought sa was weather. And the winter tire season starts at the beginning of November. Talvi rengaskausi alka maraskun alosa. That's what I, I got that. And last, yakesta, until the end of March. Maliskun lopun. I got that as well. I guessed the months correctly. Studded tires or friction tires. That's okay. Nastaren. Kaita. Just curious. Kaita. What? It means narrow? Straight. Yeah, I don't know. Keith. I'm trying to pick out like if they have Keith Karen. Keith Kari. Let me type that out. If you wrote like Nastari. Stud. I would know. I know all about that being a nastari. Uh, do you guys say that in Finnish to describe, you know, a stud? Hanon nastari. Kitkari. Friction. Okay. Not to be confused with kitara, which is another word we looked at earlier today. Guitar. Kitkari. Okay. Wow, there's a lot going on here. Studded tires or friction tires can be used in cars. Hmm. So, okay, going back here, grammatically, I got confused because I was like in or on the car. But actually, this ending, isa, I believe corresponds with this verb, pita. Pita. And uh, so it's a way of expressing like something must happen. So cars must um, have winter tires. 
have winter tires. Okay. If the weather is slippery. Okay, sorry. Going back to everything we got here in chat. Uh, you just changed your winter tilers. <laughs> yeah. I am no longer uh, autumn tiler. I am winter tiler. Kayuta uh, is to use. Oh, yeah, that's true. I get that one confused. Keep guys friction. Sa and Kelly are synonyms. Sa might be a bit more official. Okay. Kelly's more like the condition of the environment that the weather causes. Oh, okay. If conditions are slippery. Like we say that in English. So that actually, I think, checks out. I don't know why it's tra translated as going. That's kind of a weird, I don't know. Maybe it's from another word somehow. Nasta, a stud. <laughs> uh yeah you have to change the tires yourself 27 i'm not surprised <laughs> uh nasta wait it's nasta and kitka plus rengas oh wait why did i add why does it have the r in there Nastaren. That's why I assumed it must be Nastari. But if it's just Nasta. Oh, okay. Nastari sounds like a machine to make or put on studs. <laughs> oh, because of Rengas. Oh my gosh. I, you, you guys saw how confused I got because I'm like, what the heck does kaita mean? That's why I was wondering. I'm like, I thought this was about tires. But the Finnish language decides that in the middle of a word, we're going to take the word for tire, rengas, and we're going to change it. We're going to change it. We're going to change that word. It don't, it don't got the same word letters no more. That's just not how we talk up here in Finland, all right? We got the Rangas, and then we got the Rangkaita, all right? You gotta change that G to the K if you gonna be speaking our language up here, all right? So, th <laughs> so, wait, Rangas means ring? It means tire, or tire. T-Y-R-E. If you're British, if you got your British tires, I just, okay, I won't, I won't do that again. <laughs> Nasta, oh gosh, wow. That, okay, this was actually really good. Renkaita. Studded tires. Nasta rengas. Why can't I just say Nasta rengas? A studded tire. How do I how do I just say a like I just want Uxi Nastarengas. Not a stud ring. I want a studded tire. Is is Google just wrong here? What about Kipka Rengas? Kaita actually means narrow. Yeah, that's I when I when I checked it. I saw, you know, I can double click or highlight kaita, and then I saw that it means narrow. And that's why I was confused, and I was like, huh, what are these, how do these apply? What do we got? Orenkan in genitive. You can say nastarengas. Google's wrong. Okay. It's just weird how it'll be wrong here. But then when you put it in a, a, what I think is a more complex form, it's correct. Somehow Google got it right in this case. I don't know. This is good. So which words do I want? Um, you know what? I'm going to put this in my, my vocabulary just to mess with me. I don't know, a few months from now when I try to practice this. Uh, this is winter... 
entire season. What else can we add? Uh, Kelly. Kelly. I'm going to add that as well. And we're going to say that this is like weather conditions. All right. I think that's good. Um, liukas means slippery. I, I didn't know it. I should have known it. So we're going to add it here as well. Slippery. And um, I mean... Should we add nasta and what is it, kitka? We'll do it. You know what? I'm sure this, I'll regret this later. Nasta means stud and uh, kitka means friction. Right? That's good. I feel like we should uh, practice a little bit with our flashcards. Should we? You went to the grocery store, did the laundry, and on the weekend you changed the tires. Come to think of it, what did your brother do except enjoy your housekeeping? The struggle continues, 27. I'm sorry. What is this? You highly suggest checking the English Wiktionary when encountering unfamiliar words. Yeah, actually, I, I will do that occasionally. I just haven't. Pulled it up this time. Uh, and yeah, it is way better than Google Translate. That's a good tip. Um, and as a good backup, for sure. Don't confuse the word Kelly with the word Kelly. That one L means a lot. What? Do I, uh, do I dare? What? It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. This also, I don't even know. <laughs> Explain yourself. Liukas Kielinen Tyler. Slippery language Tyler. Kieli. Slippery language. Oh my goodness. Let's, uh, let's practice a little bit. All right, let's see. Morsian is bride. Puraista is to bite. Yes. Liukas. Hey, slippery. Liukas kieli. Slippery language. Nasta also means fun. Really? For stud. Did was it in in here as well? Because where they're smashing. I have a smash, I'm, we're having a smashing time. It's a very like old fashioned way of saying a, a good time. Let's come back to, in spoken language. Oh, okay. Uh, what is this? Hold on. Yeah, okay, it, it's, it should be fine. Sairastua Yohonkin is to get sick with something. Thalainen. This, this kind of, this sort of. Suoya, it does not mean bog or swamp, it means protection. Laitos, institution. Halatas to hug. Kestas to last. Sulhanen is groom. Rokotus is vaccination. Sairasta is to be ill or be sick. Pulasa, in trouble. Rokote, vaccine. Pulasa, we just did that in trouble. Talvi rengas kausi. Winter tire season. I like that. Let's see the answer. Yes. Kesta, we did that to last. 
Rokote, we did that. I need to come up with a system where like it doesn't repeat. Like if it, if I can remove whatever number from the list. Kelly, winter con weather conditions. Yeah. Institution. See, this is a good like flashcard system you could build. Um Actually, this could be kind of interesting. If we go, if we come over to the app script, you can see um, I didn't actually code this, but if you record a macro, um, how how did I do it? Was it on here? Yeah, macro. If you record a macro, um, it just like you just do a certain thing so that every time I click this, I want this to change and update, or I want the random number. So I actually copy the random number and paste it into another cell where then it pulls out the data from, from here. It does a, like a lookup basically and pulls out that, puts it here, and then I can check it. And so the thing with the random number generator, I know I'll shut up in a second, is that anytime you update the sheet, if I click on this, that number changes. So that kind of, so you have to copy and paste it so that you can preserve that random number for, you know, reviewing the word and being able to change things. So which is why a macro is really useful because the macro simply does a copy paste. And that's what's happening over here. It's like getting whatever range and then it sets a value to false or whatever, it doesn't matter. And then... Um, it does a copy and paste, I think, yeah. It copies a value and pastes it. But I didn't actually code all this. It, it automatically does it when you simply just do it in the sheet while you're recording the macro. So that's, that's how this works under the hood. Um, yeah, halata, to hug, what a wonderful word um, to end on. I feel like we got a lot of work done. We practiced several lessons at Duolingo we still have some I need to go back and uh, review, improve. Uh, and also, I got to get all these to legendary status. So I, I kind of feel like doing these language live streams is pretty um, useful uh, for me because it's like I get free Finnish tutoring lessons from like really smart people. So thanks for being here uh, and helping me out in the chat. But also, I think it might be useful for other people um, if they want to follow along and learn. Um, or I, I also, I think a lot of Finnish people might be curious, <laughs> like you guys in chat. Like, why are you here? You already speak. You already speak Finnish. <laughs> but maybe that's part of the fun. Um, you get to think about your your own language and and help me along. So much appreciated. Wait, what do we got here? Nasta mumio, a funny mummy. What? <laughs> You would say Nasta is fun, is a bit outdated in Finnish as well. A smashing time. Kesta can also be used when talking about how something is taking a long time. Oh, okay. Uh, cool, yeah, and Raul, thanks for, for attending. I'm glad you're enjoying this Finnish lesson. So, yeah, I don't know how often I'll do these, if I necessarily will do them every Tuesday. I might. I'm kind of feeling like I'd like to have this as an ongoing series. Um, and I, it probably makes sense to do it on the same day so people know like, oh, Tuesdays, that's when we're gonna do our finish lessons. Um, but then anytime I start something new, I get excited about it and I'm like, yeah, it's gonna be great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna want to continue doing this for a long time. And then like a month or two later, I'll be like, oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> so I might change my mind later on uh, if I want to, I don't know, go and play a game or something. Um, or I don't know, who knows, maybe try to, try to do something totally different. Um, but this, yeah, this is really good for me. Obviously, I want to improve my finish. And yeah, the, this, if you practice this every day, because there's the radio and the TV, uh, you'll really improve your finish a lot. You know, so I think that's also really helpful. Um, I'd also like maybe to build out this, you know, because like what I have over here, so that then I can also keep track of which words I know or I don't. And um, 
And it might also be nice because I'm keeping the dates in this column, I can, I can uh, filter so that it only pulls out cards from, for example, if I only want to practice the words from today or within the past week, um, or I want to practice the oldest words that are in the list, I might be able to select the dates. Um, so I don't know. There's, it, it, spreadsheets are fun. And when you can start building models, you know, I think this is pretty cool. So uh, I'm building a little flashcard system for myself here, customized. Um, but yeah, what do we got? Your brother just came into the room when I'm ending the stream. Yeah, perfect timing. Uh, he was there for a lot of the graveyard keeper stuff, though. So he gets some, some credit for that. Uh, and yeah, you can't force learning. Yeah, you're welcome, Vlad. I'm glad you're, um, <laughs> you get to see how I perceive the Finnish language. Uh, I definitely do not hold back when I am frustrated, all right? And not just about the Finnish language, but about people getting upset about Americans saying the word soccer or something very trivial. And I'm just like, can we please just chill out, please? <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. He didn't get to see my agony with the Finnish language. Well, next time. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I'm going to end it here. Thank you all for, for, for showing up. And, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next live stream. Take care. Goodbye.